Desolate Ada. Hey everybody, and welcome to my desk full of beautiful electronics. I've got uh, some fun stuff to show you this week. We have a new tool that we're releasing uh, called Penguin, and um, yeah. it's part of my, as you may know, I've been doing a lot of uh, board redesigns, parts are out of stock, packages are different, whatever, so, whew, pardon me. As I've been um, redoing a lot of boards, I also had this like kind of urge to like maybe clean up some of the silk screens as well. And some of you know that we have some boards with really nice silk screens and some that have kind of like plain silk screens. So it's going to be overhead. Okay. So, you know, we have, um, you know, our plain breakouts, which tend to have um, this kind of, uh, you know, vectory font. This is the default vector font from Eagle CAD. Um, you know, it's a very legible font. There's nothing wrong with it or typeface, whatever. Um, Here's a demo of it, and then uh, you know you can see it on this breakout that I happen to have here as well. You know, just um, it's a you know monospace font. You know, it'll have like the logo, which you know gets imported as a bitmap, but all the text and the labeling is uh, again using that default uh, font. And here's like the B and O zero five five, and then likewise, you know, the text vector, text vector, and then once in a while we have like a really nice board, um, like this uh, circuit playground and you'll see like the font is nice sans serif um, and uh, you know it's curved around the text and on the back you know we have this very nice legible sans serif text you know the gem m0 uh, even nicer it's got a little bit of a golden highlight here going on here but the text here and here and here is all um, uh, very nicely rendered and the way we do this is I finish the board design, um, you know, I get all the parts in the right location and I use the, this generic font. And then what I do is I go to uh, Phil B, Paint Your Dragon, and um, I ply him with Arizona iced tea and pizza. <laughs> no, just kidding. I, I uh, you know, he works for us and he, he does uh, amazing silk screens. He spends a few days and he like comes back with a gorgeous silk screen. That's how you got like the macro pad or um, the monster mask with these amazing, beautiful pieces of art. Um, and I still want to do that. Um, you know, I, when we have like a really amazing product like the macro pad or the monster mask, the circuit playground, yes, we'll spend a few days and do all the custom silk screens. Thing is though, I design like a breakout every single week and I don't want to have Philby just churn out these very basic silk screens that don't need, you know, graphics treatment. They just, I just want to have slightly nicer text. And what's funny is like, you know, as I was, I was kind of like, you know, pitching this project to Phil B and I was like, well, you know, I really want something that's not just the, the plain vectors, two vector fonts of the classic and the new vector font. And I wanted to go with a, you know, nice proportional font maybe. And he's like, well, there's a proportional font in vector. Yeah, sorry. There's a proportional font in EcoCAD. Why don't you just use that? And I'm like, it's a lie. <laughs> you know, anyone who's actually tried to use it um, knows if you use the proportional font, when you render out the e the Gerber file from EcoCAD, it gets converted into a vector font. The proportional font is not actually rastered out uh, it's also like kind of like a hell that i could knock off and we kind of were like what if we wanted to use different fonts and so um i sort of you know kind of like a week or two ago i was like sort of sent paint your dragon off and i said go figure this out you know you're you're smart um and you know what's nice is eagle cad files are xml so i was like maybe you can figure out a way to like extract the text and maybe auto generate or something you know you know, go go figure it out um, because I just don't want to, you know, I'd rather we spend like a couple weeks making a really good tool than me sending you a breakout every single week. And you're just like, you're just sitting there, you know, converting fonts. And another thing is the way we do these nice silk screens, it's, um, it gets, you know, it, it, the Gerber files are exported to, I think, DXFs imported into like, a, you know, Illustrator or some other vector editor. Philby does the silk screen and then gets exported back from SVG into BMP. It's basically unedible. Like this is like one object in Eagle Cat. It's like one bitmap object. And again, it's awesome when we do like a complicated board, but not awesome when it's just a little breakout or if I have to like move the labels around, like you can't do that. I'd have to go and edit the SVG and then re-export the whole thing. So um, the tool that uh, Philby finally came up with, and I finally got to test it out yesterday, we went back and forth and uh, neatened it up, is called Penguin. 
um, because it's kind of related to, uh, it's inspired by the buzzer tool that SparkFun uses for their um, labels. But we want to do something that was like in situ. It doesn't create libraries. It actually changes the board file itself. So let's go uh, to the computer. Uh, so this is the guide, which I, which I just published, so check it out. Um, and uh, it's a Python script, and basically what it does is it opens up, you know, you, you point it at the board file, it reads the XML, finds text, and then replaces it with the font of your choosing. So, um, you know, in this case, you, know, you can see uh, the original font was like the vector font, and then on the other side, you know, I picked my favorite, which was um, Futura Medium or Futura Heavy uh, or, or Bold. Um, I like Futura. I think it's very visible. It's kind of my, one of my favorite fonts. Um, but what's nice is that, you know, when you do this, so this is the original, and you can see, you know, this is the, the vector font. Once it's converted, sorry, one second, to here, um, and there's just a jagginess, but like ignore that's Eagle CAD's rendering. It's not actually jaggy. It's like Eagle CAD just it doesn't. It gets a little bit weirded out when you import like 1,200 uh, um, DPI bitmaps. But each one is it's a, a unique little object that you can move around. And so you know, as I do the font conversion, if I want to move labels around, you're like, oh, I want to move the SDA around. Or if I swap two pins or like the interrupt you know, left or right, or if I'm looking at the back silk screen, which looks like uh, this, you know, and I'm like, oh, I want to avoid the, um, the vias or something, you know, I can kind of shift it around to, to make sure that the text doesn't get, uh, you know, there's some vias that punch through. Um, but it's really nice, you know, like uh, even the little, you know, LED label text uh, gets converted. So you can find it on, um, GitHub, and it's called Penguin. So uh, that has information, and basically, there's like you know you can do different scaling, different DPI, and but I thought I would show it um, live. So hold on, let me let me quit everything else. Oh yeah, the font jokes are about to arrive. Just like font jokes if are you, about if to you have hit. an aversion to certain fonts like okay. put the kids in the other room. Yeah, this is this is going to get gross. <laughs> okay, so we've got like the e-ink display, right? And so I you know, I mean you're going to be able to see it in the in the yeah. in the text. But um, you know, the first one we did and so you you run it maybe I can show you run the tool um Python, Penguin, and then you set the font so you can have any any two type font you, you want. And that's the one of the things I really like is, you know, I like Futura, but other people might like different fonts. But also I can have, you can have up to three fonts because you can change the proportional vector or fixed. There's three fonts. Um, so you can, you can, you know, change them around. And it doesn't, um, a, a, it doesn't change the board you're working on. It actually creates a new board called, you know, underscore out. And then if you're like, oh, you know, I want like papyrus on my PCB. Which yeah, is we like, did it. This is what the people want. You want, you want yeah. papyrus. So of course you can't edit the text. It, you know, it's rastered. Yeah. But um, you know, this is great. Like I've always wanted. You know, maybe you know, if you want to like make this a little bit easier to read. Yeah. Great. This is the electronics they use on Planet Avatar. That's right. <laughs> this is beautiful. This is yeah. cinema. Okay. So then, I don't want to say this. We also downloaded the Blade Runner font. Yeah. And this looks really cool too, actually. So. Yeah, if you find this board in the desert flipped over, what do you do? Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of nice. So you could, you know, do, you could do, it's actually, it's almost like Star it's actually Trek. quite a nice visible it, font. It's also almost Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, it kind of Very similar. Very, like, futuristic. Yeah. And then you wanted me to, to um, oops, this is papyrus. And then we also had, speaking of next generation. Yeah. All right. We got the Klingon fonts. Yeah, you, you got Klingon. Yeah. For, for, your, for your Klingon electronics. So. Yeah. Kapok. Ka Karplok. <laughs> e display. Um, I don't know. 
Um, so this is really cool. And, uh, you know, I've already started to redo a bunch of boards with my favorite font. Um, but I think this is going to be really, really useful because you can do any font. You can, like, dynamically change it. You know, you can, it, it you know, makes a new board. So I've actually had to, you know, especially because, you know, fonts don't have the same spacing. And so, you, you know, you might want to tweak it. But what's cool is... Um, the code that Phil B wrote actually tries to, it picks the font size that will most closely match the size of the text that you had. So you don't, you know, you'll notice like this is bigger than this and then this is, this yeah. is small. So you see it actually tries to do a pretty good job of being like, okay, well how, how big is that text box? It calculates the text box size and then finds the font that kind of fits uh, best in it. So um, I think this is really neat. I've already ordered some boards and like so far the Gerber renders look um, really good and you know of course the text also in the right location as well so um, people should try this out like I said the guide is on learn um, you just you just run the uh, Python code on your uh, on your file pick the font you want and and like poof and you just, I do a little bit of, of cleanup just to make the labels all centered and everything all right and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say a couple things so maybe I can send a time-coded link later. Yeah. So there's people online, mostly Twitter, that will try to gatekeep you and move your goalposts about which design tool you use. If you're making open source hardware, it doesn't matter. KeyCAD's great. EagleCAD's great. Just publish your files and whatever you use them in. Um, for the people who pretend that uh, they're better than you or you have to use a certain tool, don't listen to them because they just want you to feel bad and not share your stuff because they have their own issues they have to deal with. So um, we know when we release this, someone's gonna say, what about KiCad? Or they're gonna say, how come Lady Ada uses Windows? Or how come the f elevator that she takes to Adafruit when she gets there has closed source firmware? Uh, we've actually gotten emails about this. Uh, I'll, uh, yeah. So don't worry about that stuff. Um, publish, oh, here's the good news. Publish your files. That's, that's the requirement for open source hardware. and. It's open source, this thing that we just did, so other yeah, people can... Why don't you the computer? We can show them the license. You can help out. Would you like contribute. to port this to KiCad or KiCad or Altium? Adium. Yeah, Altium. You could go that, to town. That's the whole point. And what happens is, and I, I, it's not the Adafruit community. It's kind of, I hate to say it, everybody else. It's very easy to separate one another. We're not separate. We're doing stuff together. But when you hear someone say something, ask yourself, are they trying to make it us versus them? Are they trying to separate one another? So it doesn't bother us that you know this is the way it is now, but it, it does bother a lot of other people. Oh, so come together. Um, Sweet. We've got two stars already. Already got two stars. So um, Check it out. I, this is great. This is like going to totally change all. I mean, like I'm going to redo all of our boards. It's going to make all of all of our designs look so much yeah. better. Um, Some people use Emacs. It's okay. I use, I use Xemacs. See, and that's the point. And I think, especially as we <laughs> barrel into the future, um, I think we can all do a really good job of telling people to come on in. It's okay. Come in with whatever you're doing. The whole point is sharing. Um, there's also like a Star Wars font too. Which is kind there of are so many. I mean, here's the thing: you can use any font you want, like Wingdings, Chicago, Helvetica, Arial, yeah. Papyrus. Yeah. I mean, it works. You know, anything that just basically yeah. just does a text. Pull up the Papyrus version. one just to burn this into all of our heads, and then we'll uh, go to the. Well, good I've search. got the. I've got the. Um, which one do you got? The Klingon, but I can redo the Papyrus one. Okay. Yeah. Here. What's fun is show, how easy show, it is. Show it live. It's so easy. It cranks out a new thing, and then yeah, and then you just you just once you're once you're good, once you know it's good, you just save it as yeah. So there you go, beautiful. Look at that. Look. Terrifying. Art. So, <laughs> so anyways, I just wanted to mention that because I'll probably have to, uh, you know, deal with someone snarking on, on uh, us or someone else, and just have to like, hey, yeah. um. If you use Windows, it's okay. If you use a Mac, it's okay. If you use Linux, it's okay. If you use Papyrus, KiCad, it's okay. If you use don't get keep Papyrus. Yeah, if you pronounce it solder versus solder, it's okay. It is okay. It's okay. Don't fall for the trap of separating all of us. It's a trap. Um, okay, so all right. Any questions before we move on to no folks like this? Of course they do. Everyone loves Papyrus. Uh, yeah, it's number one font. Okay, so just, do you want to do? I just picked it. Do you want to do a great search? Yeah, let's go right to great search. search. 
The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey Data Fruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Lady A to do is her powers of engineering every single week to show you how to find things on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what are you trying to find this week? Okay. Sorry, I had to like pull it up because yeah. I was like, what part am I looking for? What are you looking for? Okay, you know how like last week I was saying how like, wow, the silicon shortage is like not so bad anymore. I'm able to get some parts. Like remember when I couldn't get like transistors and diodes? Well, my favorite diode uh, was unavailable this week um, and it's got like a 73 week lead time. And so I thought I would show um, how I found an alternative and there was, again, it's like, it's a little bit sneaky because the first thing I did was the wrong thing. So let me just find the, the part. Better than the last thing you did with the wrong thing. Better, yes. to, get, better to get that out of the way. That's true, I, I think. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go to the, the computer and I'll show off this, my favorite diode. So I really like using uh, the NBR120 for my uh, Schottky diodes. I use it a lot of times in power supplies. You know, if you have... Um, USB power, battery power, you have O-ring diodes, and then whichever one is higher um, automatically switches over. Um, Chucky diodes are just like, they're great for so many things. Uh, you know, the, they're used for uh, switching regulators, they're used for power supplies. Sometimes I use them when I just, I need like a, you know, one directional switch, you know, for uh, like a button. You know, I use them on my RP2040 boards. Not that MBR120 maybe a smaller one, but still love this, love this diode. Not in stock. Uh, not in stock. We we do have some, but we're gonna run out really soon. And so, um, seeing that there wasn't any available, and that the manufacturer lead time is is a uh, stunning seventy three weeks. Um, well, hold on. There you go. Uh, a stunning seventy three weeks. I mean, like that's now we're talking like twenty twenty four to get this diode and I was a little bit like scared because I use this in so many designs again like boost converters buck converters um, you know almost every feather uses it as part of the the power regulator system so um, the thing about this is one thing was a little sneaky is you know I was like you know is it is shocky diode is it shocky diode no not really there's actually it, it's sometimes the simpler the part the tougher it is to find an alternative spec because um, it's deceptive. I found that diodes are very deceptive. People are like, oh, I mean, yes, if it's a one and four and you know four one four eight, you're pretty much good to go. But once you get into these like power diodes or shocky diodes, there's there's specifications that you really um, you may care about. So the thing I particularly and, and another thing is I spec this part like a decade ago, right? Like I've used this one part in so many boards, but when I first picked it as part of like my power supply, you know, family, um, you know, I kind of, I didn't make a note of what it was that I liked about it. So the part of it was also figuring out what, what was it about this diode that I, I really liked. But the thing that then I realized, first off, you know, 20 volts. So it can be used for almost all, you know, 12 volt, you know, boost supplies or, you know, buck converters, uh, USB. Basically, you know, 20 volts is one of the lowest voltages you can get. Um, one amp. Why did I pick one amp? Well, because almost everything that we make is USB powered. And USB pretty much only gives you about an amp of current. So I don't really need to go above that for constant current usage. The thing that was really nice about this is the ultra, ultra low forward voltage. So 340 millivolts forward voltage at one amp, which is which is very low. Again, most non shock key diodes, your 4 and 4001, etc. You're looking about 700 to, to 900 uh, millivolts, easily at a volt. And, you know, when you're dealing with electronics running at 3 volts or 5 volts, you know, that half volt will, is, is going to be the difference between how long you can run on a LiPo battery. Especially if you have, you know, you have your LiPo battery and then you have a shock key diode and then a 3.3 volt regulator. You know, you want to make sure that, that, you know, that drop is 0.1 volt or 0.2 volts for most of the use case. So you're not losing all of that uh, power through the diode before it gets to the regulator, and then the regulator, you know, needs a little bit of headroom as well. So the mistake I made was like, well, one in four, one four eight, one, you know, one in four thousand, one the family, you know, I want the MBR one twenty family. So let's just look at that and see what's available. And you know, yes, uh, it looks like there's a couple different uh, forward voltages. I looked at active. And then uh, I searched by quantity available, and there was nothing in stock 
from, you know, on semi. So that was kind of a downer. Um, there are a couple different, you know, slight part variations. Um, you know, some with 350, 450, or 500 millivolts. So I was kind of like, uh-oh, you know, this is, this is not good because I know that I, I really like this particularly low dropout type rectifier. But my mistake was I shouldn't have searched for the family name. Um, what I should actually do, and I also searched for the package case, and that was a mistake also because there's actually quite a few very similar package cases. What you want to do is just look for a, uh, you know, active shop key diode. Um, 20 volts is not so important. I do want one amp, and I want like a fast recovery type. Uh, the reverse current, I just want to be, you know, that or less, and surface mount. And then when I got to the next page, because actually the reverse voltage is not as important, um, the forward voltage, I'll figure that out in a moment. So the supplier package here, there's actually quite a few all in the same family. Remember, it was the uh, SOD 123F, but there's like a bunch that are all very, it's like SOD 123W, P, FL, FA. I mean, those are going to be like different heights maybe or like specific packages. I don't care as long as it fits on the footprint. So, uh, you know, I selected those. And then, again, I really want that low forward voltage. Um, and so the one I was comparing to was like, you know, 350-ish. And I'll go up to 400 maybe just to see what the what the specs are because again they go they go quite high but I do want it to be a low forward voltage. And then I searched by uh, quantity available, and I got actually quite a few uh, you know pretty good options. So um, this one was really nice, the MBR X120. See. You got to be careful because sometimes it's like in the family, but the family name is not the exact same name. And then um, also from the same, you know, uh, family, not family, similar, MBR 1020, right? Slightly different named, but also very low forward voltage. Uh, and also it's actually got the same reverse current leakage, which is also important to me. I want to reduce that. Uh, currently get so this one this this panjit international actually ended up being the part that i got because they have plenty in stock but i do want to also note that um in addition to like you know the mbr 1x20 um there's also the pmeg family of uh shocky diodes so this one the next nexperia nxp they don't use MBR 1020 or 120. They have a different name. You know, the way they, they name their, their low dropout shocky diodes is, is PMEG. And then the voltage, you know, in this case, 30. And then 10, the current, you know, 1 amp, 30 volts. Um, and these were actually about the same price. They were also uh, very good, 360 um, millivolts. And then the PMEG 2010... Um, you know, had pretty excellent reverse leakage and also very low uh, forward voltage. So a couple different really good options. Um, but you'll see there's not a ton of options in stock. Like this is, you know, marketplace ones. I didn't really look at this, but the MBR X120 and the MBR 1020 um, are both uh, excellent options to replace the, for ultra low dropout uh, shocky diodes that are one amp uh, could uh, continuous current. And that's your great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DJ King. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question. Yes. Um, I hope it's about papyrus. Well, sort of. Uh, or shocky diodes. If you wanted to play around with this and get a font, can it be um, an OTF? What what's is TTF um, or believe, like what type of so what type of font? I should only it be? use TTF because it's kind of like the most popular. Uh -huh. It's anything that Python Pillow because that's the library we're using will import. I bet OTF will work. Basically, if Python Pillow supports. Yeah. Do you want to try an experiment live? Uh, sure. All right. Go to a u r e 
B E S H dot org. Barbesh? A U R E B E E S H dot org. This. Yeah. Barbesh. Yeah. Wikipedia. Yeah. Do you want me to find like the font? Yeah, no, no. Go to go to the, the site, the dot org. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then scroll down and download the uh Uh, yeah, cool. Download the uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, okay, get download OTF. OTF. Yeah. yeah, download the OTF. Try it out just just for just to see. Okay. Sure. So let's we'll drag the. Hold on. Yeah. This is like only 720p because. Yeah, this is suggested in the broadcast. The chat, okay, so. Ari Bash. Okay, so now I have to. Uh, yeah. I have to go back here. I'll go to your computer now. Yeah, let's just see what happens. Oh, let's see. Sorry. And then I actually have uh, I have this trinky here that I was I was looking at too. So let me let's do the trinky. Yeah, let's see so what happens. So this is the this is what the trinky looks like beforehand. Before. Okay. And then let's bring it into the Star Wars also universe. Also the bottom silk, by the way. In case okay. You're interested. Okay, so yeah, let's see what uh, happens. Python three penguin, and it is the proportional font. Fonts or Besh, and then okay, I think it worked. Let's look at the output. It's that yeah. easy. Top silk. There's this is great. Okay, and then flip it to the other side. Oh, boot. Well, they have to change the sizes a little bit. Yeah. So. All right, right on. Okay, so this was just a random thing that came up. Um, from yeah. the, the team. You kind of see it say like the RP2040. Yeah, this is cool. So, you know what? By the way, I'm going to call it because I can, I can, this is on the internet forever. Someone is going to make a really cool cosplay electronics thing using Adafruit uh, open source hardware. And when they're finished with it, all of the electronics are going to have uh, the Star Wars font in it. It'll be the mo it'll be like they'll be like oh let me show you how it works like there'll be lightsabers that use these fonts and stuff like that. Wow, uh, yeah, everyone loves Wookies. This is happening. It's happening. This is happening. Okay, cool. Okay, well, thanks for uh, indulging uh, my no curiosity problem. here. All right, any other questions? Will we wrap it up for this Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Oh, uh, folks are saying yeah. This is OTF is a super type of uh, TTF. So yeah. Yeah. That's sorry. I mean, it, it basically, I think any any vector you do want a vector font, of course, because it's going to resize things as necessary. Yeah. Okay. That's Desk Lady Eight, everybody. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Kerplock. <laughs> <laughs>